Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, as I have made clear many times on this channel, anyone who is serious about fighting hair loss needs to be on a 5AR inhibitor. A 5AR inhibitor is not the only weapon in our arsenal against the slaphead curse, but it is the foundational treatment that will be responsible for most of our progress. That is because an oral 5AR inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride is the most efficient way to safely lower DHT levels on the scalp. And D DHT is the trash hormone responsible for the progression of hair loss in people who have androgenic alopecia. Now, there are of course other things people can incorporate into a hair loss stack, such as a growth stimulant like minoxidil, which will help, but will only be minimally effective in the short term if you're not keeping your DHT levels under control. You can also try a direct androgen antagonist like fluoridyl or clascoterone, which will lower DHT levels, but to date, there's never been any androgen antagonist proven to be as effective at lowering DHT as a 5-AR inhibitor. So the bottom line is this, you need a 5-AR inhibitor to stop hair loss from androgenic alopecia in the long run, and the two most effective and popular options are finasteride and dutasteride. Either of these 5-AR inhibitors will be effective in treating hair loss even when used by themselves. Dutasteride is slightly more efficacious as a treatment as it suppresses about 10% more scalp DHT compared to finasteride, but even finasteride will still be effective in stopping or reversing hair loss in the vast majority of people who use it. Generally speaking, dutasteride is considered only after people have been on finasteride for a while and not experienced satisfactory results. I'm not talking about people who freak out about a shed after a few months and assume the treatment isn't working. Those people are just being hypochondriacs who have not been properly educated about hair growth cycles, and if you want to learn more about that, I'll post my video on shedding below. But the bottom line is that if you want to grow new, stronger hair, you have to shed out the weaker, miniaturized hair, and this can happen over for several cycles. So yes, it is normal to shed and oftentimes it is essential. So stop worrying please. If shedding bothers you so much, just think about how bad it will be if you don't start treatment. You'll still shed, except in that case the hair won't come back. So. What I mean when I say results from finasteride are not being satisfactory, I'm talking about people who have been on the drug for at least a year, preferably even longer than that, and they are still losing ground. The reason why you need to give it time is that it has been shown that in the clinical trials that finasteride can take up to two years before it has its peak effect. So oftentimes the people who claim finasteride isn't working for them just haven't given the drug enough time. But even though the overwhelming majority of people will respond well to finasteride, there are still a small minority of people who don't respond as well, or maybe they do respond well, but they're getting hair greed and think that switching to dutasteride will give them even better results. Further still, there are some people who wonder, hell, if dutasteride and finasteride are so great, why not use both of them at the same time? At first, this may seem fairly redundant as the drugs work similarly enough that you wouldn't expect the effects to stack together the way, say, minoxidil and finasteride do, since Minoxidil works differently from finasteride. Dutasteride, on the other hand, works very similarly to finasteride. It just has a more prolonged effect and also suppresses more of the type 2 5AR enzyme than finasteride. Dutasteride also suppresses the type 1 5AR enzyme 100 times more than finasteride, although the type 1 enzyme is more related to sebaceous gland production of sebum and hasn't been shown to play any role in the progression of androgenic alopecia. So that may just be an incidental effect of the drug. So people who use dutasteride and finasteride together will try doing it in different ways. Some will use finasteride regularly and then maybe just use dutasteride once or twice per week to get some extra DHT suppression to give some extra protection on top of what finasteride already provides. This makes some sense because unlike finasteride, which has about a five hour half-life, the half-life of dutasteride lasts for about five weeks. So even though you are taking it weekly, it could still have a beneficial effect. Also, this may be a good way to kind of dip your toes into dutasteride usage without using it every day because one concern about combining the two drugs is the possibility you'll increase the risk of side effects, although it's worth mentioning that clinical research shows that both drugs are about as equally well tolerated when used individually at least. In fact, given the long half-life of dutasteride, it probably is redundant to take both dutasteride and finasteride on a daily basis. So. 
If you're using finasteride and dutasteride together on a regular basis, say daily or every other day, you likely will not produce superior outcomes compared to just using dutasteride by itself, although I would certainly welcome any research proving me wrong here. Unfortunately, there is not a whole lot of research on combining these two drugs together, at least when combining oral finasteride and oral dutasteride together. There is a small study, however, of 15 patients who used a proprietary topical formulation of dutasteride, finasteride, as well as minoxidil in this uh, product called NUH, new H, I guess. However, this was a very sloppy study that had no control group, and in addition to the topical new H use, subjects could decide for themselves if they wanted to add finasteride at one milligram per day, or minoxidil, or ketoconazole shampoo to their regimen. Not surprisingly, all subjects showed some improvement in hair growth because they were all on at least one thing that has been proven to work. So this doesn't really tell us if the combination of topical finasteride and dutasteride is any better than either one alone. Anyways, we are more interested in seeing if combining the oral versions of these drugs results in superior outcomes compared to either one alone. So unfortunately, we don't have any randomized control studies of combining these two oral drugs together, but we do have a case report from 2012. And even though a case report is not exactly considered a top tier form of scientific evidence, the paper does come from Rodney Sinclair, who's one of the top hair loss researchers in the entire world. He's the one who came up with the Sinclair scale, which is similar to the Ludwig scale, which is used to measure androgenic alopecia severity in women. So he's definitely several tiers above Dr. Trash. And if you want to know what I think about Dr. Trash's research, I'll link a video below where I review it. So in this case, we have a 47-year-old man who came to Dr. Sinclair's office after having a two-year history of progressive hair loss due to androgenic alopecia. Dr. Sinclair took a photo prior to any treatment, and you can see what his hair looked like in this photo here. He started the patient on finasteride at one milligram per day. After six months, he had some improvement, as you can see in this photo. So this guy was initially a pretty good responder to finasteride. Unfortunately, however, after four years of continuous use, he started to lose ground, as you can see in this photo here. So this is not a typical case, since finasteride has been proven to maintain or even continue to promote hair growth even after 10 years of use and I'll post a video where I go over that, but in any case, this guy was one of the very few people who started losing ground on finasteride, although things would definitely be worse for him had he never started to begin with. So it's not like finasteride wasn't doing anything for him at all. Dr. Sinclair saw this, and he decided to continue his daily one milligram finasteride use, but to also add dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams administered once per week. The patient had no side effects from the combined therapy, and after five months of combined therapy use, he had a dramatic increase in hair density. The vertex of his scalp clearly shows almost complete coverage, as you can see in this photo here. So Dr. Sinclair discusses in the paper why he thinks adding dutasteride helped his patient. He brings up that in addition to the type 1 and type 2 5-AR isoenzymes, there is a type 3 5-AR isoenzyme, and it is present throughout the skin, though its role in hair loss isn't known yet. At the time this article was written in 2012, it was felt that finasteride was a more potent suppressor of the type 3 isoenzyme than dutasteride, but as it turns out, later research has shown that both drugs are potent suppressors of the type 3 isoenzyme. So the only difference between these two drugs is that dutasteride is a more potent suppressor of the type 2 isoenzyme, about three times more potent than finasteride. And we know the type 2 isoenzyme is the enzyme that is the biggest contributor to hair loss, but dutasteride also suppresses is the type 1 isoenzyme, which may be why it suppresses serum DHT levels by up to 90% versus only about 70% with finasteride. So even though there is a 20% difference in serum DHT suppression, there is only about a 10% difference in scalp DHT suppression with dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams, suppressing about 10% more DHT than 1 milligram of finasteride. This may be because the type 2 enzyme is so concentrated in the hair follicles of the scalp, so the type 1 suppression only makes a big difference in serum DHT suppression and not scalp DHT. In any case, Dr. Sinclair notes that 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride used once per week is just slightly less of a dose than 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride used daily, and 0.1 milligram of dutasteride used daily suppresses about 70% of serum DHT. So that's about equal to what one milligram of finasteride suppresses. I made a video on dutasteride dosing, and I'll link that below if you want to know more about that. So, 
Getting back to how Dr. Sinclair feels about this, he feels that if you're going to add dutasteride to finasteride, it really is only necessary to add it once per week, and this will produce superior outcomes compared to just using finasteride daily by itself. Unfortunately, since this is just a case report, we can't conclude that this combination would have been better than just dutasteride alone since this wasn't tested in this patient. Nevertheless, it makes sense that incorporating a stronger 5-AR inhibitor once per week alongside regular use of a weaker 5-AR inhibitor will give you better outcomes than just using the weaker 5-AR inhibitor by itself. So I do think people who are already on finasteride and maybe want to just get a bit more out of their stack but don't want to fully switch to dutasteride should at least consider adding a once or maybe twice per week 0.5 milligram dutasteride capsule into their hair loss stack. It is a safe and effective way to get just a bit more DHT suppression without going full-blown nuclear. It may also be a good idea if you want to fully switch to dutasteride as you can just start with a once or twice per week dutasteride dose and then see how you respond. And if you are a good responder, you can then consider increasing the frequency of dutasteride use to daily use and then gradually tapering off finasteride. But keep in mind, there's also such a thing as hair greed. It's like people will get good results from finasteride, but then they get addicted to the idea that they can just keep getting better and better results if they just keep throwing more and more drugs at the problem. They will then unnecessarily end up throwing the entire kitchen sink at the problem when finasteride is already getting the job done by itself. Now, I can completely understand hair greed. I've had it myself, and there were times when I had been on as many as eight different treatments, but the reality is, is that finasteride and minoxidil alone have been more than satisfactory at stopping and reversing my hair loss. But nevertheless, if you are really losing ground or maybe are hoping for some additional regrowth, I do think you should talk to your doctor about adding a once per week dutasteride dosage to your routine. It's a very reasonable addition that comes with very few risks and potentially big rewards as we saw in the case study. So give it a try, but be careful not to get too addicted with the hair greed, otherwise you'll end up like those idiots on hair loss forums who go on full-blown transgendered hormone replacement therapy when they're just Norwood twos. So I hope that helps, Chooms, and I'll see you next time. So good luck on the path, my fellow hair loss switchers. Take care.